Dear students, welcome to the session on international strategy. Objective of this session is to study how internationalization affects a firm's competitive advantage. I would like to discuss four themes. First, why do firms internationalize? What are the rationale, benefits, and costs of venturing into the foreign economies? Second, what are the key decisions related to firms' entry into foreign economies, namely market selection, entry timing, scale of entry, and mode of entry? Third, strategic decisions in multinational firms and how their strategic orientation influences and reflects their organization. And fourth, how internationalization adds to a firm's innovation performance, what are the decisions and issues related with R&D internationalization. We have three video lectures on the first three themes. We discussed the four themes briefly in our last lecture. Uh, however, we will again touch upon some issues in detail in the WBS live session. Now, why does a firm internationalize? What is the rationale behind? And what are the costs and benefits for the firm? So in this video lecture, we will address some of these basic questions. First, how do firms operate in a foreign country? When does a, uh, a firm invest in foreign assets rather than operate through market mechanism? Third, what are the strategic objectives behind investing in a foreign economy? Uh, what are the challenges of operating in foreign economies? And what are the theories which explain uh, firms making FDI in foreign countries? A firm can operate in a foreign market in two ways. First, through contractual agreements. That is, by finding a partner who distributes its products in that foreign market, as in case of exports, or supplies inputs from that foreign market, as in case of imports, or performs value-creating activities in the foreign market using firm's intellectual property and paying royalties. For example, many smartphone manufacturers in East Asia use Qualcomm semiconductor and wireless communications technology patents and pay Qualcomm royalty. The second way, as you can see in the right side of the picture, is through equity mode, that is by making foreign direct investments and fully or partially owning a subsidiary organization in that foreign market. So the question arises, uh, given the option of operating in foreign markets without making risky investments, why does a firm make an FDI? So let us see the problems with non-equity modes of operating in a foreign market. Exporters may face tariff and non-tariff barriers. In case of bulk goods, the cost of transportation itself can be very high and prohibitive. Licensing may also have several limitations. First of all, a firm may end up giving away its valuable technological know-how to potential foreign co competitors. Second, firm's source of competitive advantage may be knowledge and capabilities embedded in its organization processes, routines, and culture. Such tacit knowledge and capabilities are not easily transferable. Third, the firm may want to exercise stronger control over foreign operations for strategic reasons. It may not be possible with the suppliers, distributors, and licensees. Thus, because of such market imperfections or market failures, a firm may internalize the foreign operations. So now let's try to understand why firms invest abroad. So first of all, when a company invests in a foreign market, it seeks profitability not only in that foreign market, but also stronger competitive positioning within its home country. For example, when British Telecom decides to invest in US, it not only tries to make money in the US, but also have a, have a stronger competitive position in the British market because it is operating in the US. 
perhaps it will learn something it will do r and d it will get certain resources from the us economy which it cannot get in the british economy and thus it will have a stronger position vis-a-vis -vis those firms which are operating only in the uk okay so there are four um, strategic reasons or motivations why firms go abroad right one is to seek market so we have numerous examples of it. Japanese automobile companies like Honda and Toyota, for example, invested in the US to access its market. Uh, this was since mm, 1980s. Uh, this kind of FDI becomes even more relevant for the firms which have a small home country markets. So Philips from Netherlands is a great example, which historically started going abroad very early in its life cycle. The second reason is to seek efficiency or lower cost of production. For example, many American, European and Japanese firms invest in low cost economies like China, Taiwan and Malaysia to seek efficiency. The third reason is access to strategic resources. So these resources can be natural. For example, many energy companies from the US and Europe invested in the Middle East to access crude petroleum. More recently, many Chinese mining companies invested in Australia and Africa to secure supplies. These resources can also be more sophisticated. So for example, many European and Asian companies invest in the Silicon Valley to access valuable knowledge resources and engineering skills. Uh, Samsung from South Korea is a great example of it. And then the fourth uh, reason is to minimize risk. If the supply chain gets disrupted or the market slumps in the home country, a firm operating in foreign countries as well will have superior performance. It will have lower risks. Firms are normally embedded in and adapted to their home countries where they were founded and developed their processes, routines, and culture. When they venture into a foreign economy, uh, normally they have lesser knowledge about the local context and actors. They also need to adapt the organization to the local institutions, norms, and cultural expectations. They may enjoy less legitimacy than the, foreign, than the local firms. Quite often, local stakeholders, including the political actors, have a more favorable attitude towards the local firms. Apart from these, subsidiaries of foreign multinational firms have additional costs of coordinating with the headquarters and other subsidiaries, which may be separate by time and distance. Due to these issues, foreign firms have higher costs than the local ones. This is what we call liability of foreignness. It reduces firms' performance, at least in the short term. However, as the firms invest in local learning and adaptation, this liability is lowered. Why does a firm locate its production or R&D in a specific economy? Liberal economists argue that specialization and free trade create value. According to Adam Smith, a country should specialize in industries where it has an absolute advantage over others. For example, if England uses five units of inputs to produce 10 units of textile and seven units of wine, and France uses five units of inputs to produce 10 units of wine and seven units of textile, then England should specialize in textile and France should specialize in wine. Thus, we will have the highest overall production of textile and wine and England and France could trade with each other. Ricardo further argued that a country should specialize in those industries in which it has the highest competitive advantage over others. Now let us imagine that England uses five units of inputs to produce 10 units of textile and eight units of wine, whereas uh, France uses five units of inputs to produce seven units of textile and seven units of wine. So in both these cases, England has the highest absolute advantage. However, according to Ricardo, England should specialize in textile 
where it has the highest comparative advantage. Scholars like Heckscher and Ahlin argued that our country's comparative advantage is based on factor of endowment. For instance, if US has cheaper land and cheaper capital, it should specialize in agriculture and capital intensive industries. Whereas countries like China and India with cheaper labor should specialize in labor intensive industries. Proponents of new trade theory argue that uh, even in the absence of competitive advantage, specialization and trade create value as it gives firms a larger economy of scale. They also underline the importance of technological innovation and entrepreneurship. If a region experiences breakthrough innovations and creation of an industry, it will have a competitive advantage in that industry as its firms uh, will have first mover advantage and will create a business network. Michael Porter studied the competitive advantage of nations. Why does a country excel in a particular industry? So he identified four attributes. First, an advantage in factor endowment. Second, favorable demand conditions. That is, existence of a large and growing market and demanding consumers who push the producers to innovate. Third, presence of related and supporting industries, which produces learning and synergies. And fourth, competitive industry structure and intense rivalry between firms. It pushes them to innovate and make them competitive at a global stage. So Porter, apart from these four, Porter also highlighted the importance of chance events, serendipity, for example, and public investment in education. So that can explain why certain countries are better in a particular industry and not others. Now let us look at why firms internationalize, why they create or own assets in foreign countries. According to eclectic paradigm, firms select FDI over market mechanism because of internalization advantages. In case of opportunism, high costs of partner search and dispute resolution, and uncertainty warranting renegotiation with the partners. Firms tend to internalize activities rather than achieve them through market relationships. In such situations, firms invest in a foreign country rather than operating through suppliers or distributors. According to evolutionary theory, uh, firms internationalize so that they can source, transfer, and recombine diverse knowledge from different operations. Cooperation or knowledge flow between units in the same organization uh, are more effective.